How's it going guys and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I successfully diagnosed and rectified a no start fault on the Holden Captiva. I'm going to be going through the whole process on this. I'm going to be showing you exactly what broke down and the components we replaced to fix that and eliminate that, com that problem from ever happening again. I'm also going to be doubling back over a tip that I gave in a recent video, which is bypassing a starter motor relay and how that can be very useful in speeding up some diagnostic processes. I was able to use that tip in this video and speed up my own uh, diagnostic approach, which led me to the fault very quickly and efficiently and I was able to get on and fix this problem. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay, so first things first, a background story of the fault. Customer told me that it was an intermittent fault. It would start sometimes, it wouldn't start other times, but there was no set pattern to the fault. You could have the vehicle there for 20 minutes trying repeatedly and you would not start it. It could be there for an hour. You could go away from the vehicle, come back and it would start first time. Also, if you turned it off, turned it on again, the fault might not be there. And it wasn't necessarily when it was hot or was cold. Again, there was no set pattern to it. So with that information, I set about and I start to do my diagnostic. The first thing I always do is confirm the customer complaint. The customer was 100% accurate. There was no set pattern to this. It could be left idle for a long period of time and it would start straight away. It also could fail to start repeatedly for a very long time. So based on the good instinct of what I was feeling from the key, it was completely blank most of the time. So you turn the key and you get that lights on, lights off as if the battery is dead. It's not even engaging the starter. There's nothing happening. There's not even a click most of the time. There was a very faint click some of the time and with that I decided to use my bypass of the starter motor relay technique. This was something I showed recently on a video and it is one that is very effective in eliminating some of the earlier problems on your system. So just to give you a little bit better of an understanding as to why bypassing a starter motor relay can be a really effective and quick way of diagnosing and eliminating some potential failures. I have pulled the wiring diagram of the Holden Captiva here. So this is exactly what's going on in the system that I'm working on and I'll just show you how it functions very briefly. This here is the ignition switch. You crank the vehicle goes down to a multi-control module. That multi-control module then goes down to the ABS, onto the transmission control module in an automatic, and up it goes to the uh, engine control module here. Then if you look at this, this is gonna be number 86, which is the control side of the ECM, which is sending the signal all the way up along to the relay. So this is going to be 86 and this is into your starter motor relay. This is going to be 85 which is your ground and that goes back out here. This is going to be number 30 here which is the fused side and that's the positive input from the battery and then lastly is 87 and that's normally open and that's going to be a positive 12 volt to the device. So by bypassing this, you're essentially uh, ruling out the relay as an issue and all of these uh, components um, that give input to the signal to actually send down to the starter. So joining across here in this vehicle, the fault was still present. So every time I crossed 1387, I would get the exact same result as if I was turning the key on the ignition switch. By doing that, I was able to bring my focus down to the starter motor and have a look and see if the solenoid 
or potential connections down to the solenoid was giving some issues. So that's where I drew my focus on and that is why I use uh, this simple test to help in diagnosing. So with that, I'm gonna jump back in and show you uh, the uh, real live test that I did on this Captiva and then show you what actually failed on it to cause this no start fault. Once I have confirmed that the fault is still present, the next thing obviously we need to do is get a look at that starter motor. I put it in the air and I try to get a visible look at it. On these Captivas, they are not in a nice position. They sit right behind the transfer case or power transfer unit and it is a difficult removal process on it. But with enough visibility, shining the light up and getting a clear view, I was able to see that the solenoid had clear visible heat issues on it. So did the cabling. There's two cables that goes on to the starter motor solenoid, one that runs directly to the alternator, the other one running up to the battery. Both of those showed that there was issues on it and this obviously had a fault from it. When I got my hand up to the cable itself, I was able to feel that the nut on the, um, on the starter motor was slightly loose. I was able to, with a bit of um, tension, move back the nut with my hand, which shouldn't be possible, which was showing that there was high resistance in these cables and that there was a fault that needed to be rectified. I now had all the information I needed to consult with the customer as how we go about the repair, but in this case, there was a superseded model in regards to the cabling. This is a fault in the Captivas. Um, that double cable um, that is on these is now a single cable that you buy, and that had to be sourced. We also needed a new starter motor to put into it. Why does this happen? Well, there's a couple of reasons um, why this can happen. Vibrational movement on the actual cable itself can cause it to oscillate, move and back away that nut. But I would say from more of a standpoint of where the cable is rooting, it is right against that mount that sits above the um, transfer case. That cable rubs against that and when you have that engine vibration, I would say it wouldn't be that difficult over time to move that cable loose because of that. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a fault in anything other than the design of the cable layouts. Having a single cable rather than two cables is obviously going to be a better solution. You could also have maybe a secondary locker nut on it which makes it a lot harder for anything to back away. But either or, we knew what the fault was and I set about fixing it. So with that information, knowing what's wrong, knowing what needs to be rectified, uh, the customer gives us the go ahead to order the parts and fix this problem. To get at that starter, we do need to remove the transfer case. I have a step-by-step -step guide on how you do that on a previous video. I did actually a transfer case failure on a Captiva. I will also link that in the description if you want to use that to be able to do the same job should you have it on your Captiva. Once I have the transfer case out of the way, you have clear visibility to the starter itself. Starter is held in by two bolts on the lower side and then the most difficult one is the inner part. That's gonna be a little bit tricky to get out. Um, there is a cable routing connection at the top of it, just a little plastic clip that needs to be pushed back out of the way so you can actually remove that bolt from the starter motor. Once you have uh, those three bolts removed and obviously you're going to have the battery disconnected along with the uh, connections on the starter motor. The starter motor will come out of the way. As you can see in these clips here, the starter motor solenoid had a, a lot of heat on them and it clearly needed to be replaced along with these cables as you can see. 
Uh, the new cable, a much better setup, that single setup um, makes it a lot less likely to cause any issues. It's also a little bit tighter of a routing, which means there will be less chance of it rubbing against the body or against that mount to cause any issues. I said about doing the install, which is quite straightforward in regards to the starter. I just compare like for like, starter motor is the same. I stick it in and then it's about routing the cable. So the cable needs to come up the top side of the um, engine bay. So you're going to need to push it up through or push it down, whichever way you start. It's going to uh, be connected to uh, the fuse board. It's also going to be connected to another fuse box on the front side and you are going to want to connect up the earth cables correctly. Uh, if you have any difficulties in this phase, I always say just take a picture before you remove anything. That way you can't really go wrong. If you take a picture before you remove any of those cablings, you will always know where they root down from and you are far less likely to make a mistake, especially if you are doing this by yourself without any help of a mechanic. So once I have set about and reinstalled all the cabling in the correct uh, places, making sure you have the correct tension on all of those nuts and bolts, making sure the alternator and the visibility is not great on the alternator side. So you wanna make sure that that is secured down and nice and tight and the contacts are clean on all of those items. Once that is done, starter is installed obviously and it's nice and tight, we then can install the transfer case. So once we have everything back together, we bring it for a road test, we bring it back in and we check the starting system multiple times. We now know the customer is not gonna have any more issues with the starting system on this Holden Captiva. We have put in an upgraded cable, we have rectified the starting issue and it is good to go. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.